Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are Poll on the Call podcast, and my name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers. And today we are here with the amazing Poll coach, Brandon. Thank you so much for being here with us today to tell us a little bit more about your whole journey and your coaching and everything else. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so happy, so happy to be here. Um, really excited to talk to you guys. Uh, and again, just thank you so much for, you know, the opportunity to sit down and, you know, just discuss all things poll. For sure. Yes. <laughs> so excited um, to learn. I know, right? <laughs> I'm Paul on the cause been following you for a while. So I'm like, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I guess we should start with the very beginning with what brought you to pole dance. So it's kind of interesting. I broke up with my ex, moved back to the Northern Virginia area. And my cousin who takes classes, teaches, and also competes reached out to me and said, Hey, you should, you should take a Lyra class at our studio. And I said, okay, cool. Um, I took a Lyra class. It was really cool. And then we went upstairs. Um, the way that our studio is broken out is we have a main area where we do silks and Lyra. We have a larger main studio to the side. And then we have a balcony upstairs. So we went up to the balcony and she said, I want you to try this. And it was a flying body and it was an invert. And I was like, oh, this is so, this is so fun. This is great. And I signed up for classes right after that. And is that the, at the same studio that you currently teach at? Yep. So I started off taking classes there and then I got my certification to teach yoga. So I started teaching yoga at the studio. Following that, I started teaching pole classes. So it was just kind of, you know, one thing after another. And what is the name of the studio? So the studio that I teach at is Diva Fit Pull and Aerial Fitness. We are located probably about 45 minutes or so away from downtown DC. If you're familiar with the Northern Virginia area, we're pretty close to Dulles Airport. Um, so we're located in Herndon, Virginia. Nice. Uh, representing the shirt there. Yeah, the representing the shirt. And also, if you see a snoot um, kind of come to the side, that's my dog. Uh, <laughs> but she's, sometimes she likes to make appearance video calls. She's, she's debating whether or not. You'll see her on my Instagram occasionally. She'll either jump at the pole, she'll jump at me, or most recently she just did. It was very important to chew my feet while I was grabbing my camera. Of course. <laughs> Yes. Well, maybe she'll make her poll on the call debut. Oh, that'd be excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So that, well, um, so when when did you say like, that you started your uh poll journey? What what year was it? Um, I think I was thirty. So I'm thirty five now. So about five years ago. Oh wow! Nice. It was just like a fast track, like, this is where I am now. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. oh what, like what I see you do on Instagram, I'm like, he's been doing this for years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it definitely, sometimes it feels like I have been doing it much longer than I think I actually have. And I think it's because... I just, I put a lot of hours into it. Um, And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I I track my own progression. And then I see that and I'm like, that's, that's really cool. You know, and, and it's a, it's an empowering, but then it's also kind of like a, it's almost like a humbling experience as well. Because when, and you guys might experience this, as you continue to do it, I think there's this, this relationship that you have with your body. Um, and one of the, one of my core principles, and this is what I teach about too, is honoring your body and honoring your needs. And so to me, you know, you can strive for 
complicated tricks. Um, but if you don't get it, that's okay. That the tricks to me don't make you a dancer or a performer. I think they're one aspect of a, of a larger picture. And, you know, in my experience, there's things that I've tried and I'm like, I really want this. And I'm like, I'll do it. And I don't get it. I fail, fail, fail. Like, and I'm like, I'm just going to keep going for that trick. But it's a nice reminder to be like, this is what I've been able to accomplish. I can't get that trick, but that's okay. You know? Um, so as long as I'm keeping like my body, my health and mind first and just kind of honoring that, that's, um, that's part of the, the larger experience. And this actually goes back to when I said tangents, cause you asked me a question and I went off in something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. We're getting started early. <laughs> oh, that is okay. <laughs> right, no worries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Did you have any movement background um, before you started Lyra, which led you to pull? <laughs> so I did, I did one Lyra class and then I was like, oh, I'm going to do pull. Uh, my, my movement background, uh, I started off doing yoga and it's, it's kind of interesting. I actually used to be a very heavy drinker uh, and I used to be a smoker. And at one point I decided, okay, I would like to start working on my, my health. And I remember going to a yoga class and this is after I had started lifting weights. And I said, I'm, I'm a relatively strong person. Uh, you know, I can, I can lift weights. And I got, I got my ass handed to me. I mean, I, I woke up and I was like, I did not know that that muscle existed. What the hell? Um, everything hurt. And from there, I just started doing yoga once a week. I ended up quitting smoking. Uh, once I think I was 29 at the time. And then I just kept up with my yoga practice. And then eventually, I started noticing a lot of the similarities between what I was doing in yoga and how it was helping just my overall awareness with pull um, and just the movement around the pole as well. So that's, that's kind of how we've come full circle to today. Uh, there is one, one part though, when I started my pole journey, I really wish that I had videos of this. Uh, and if I, if I find them, I'll definitely have to send them to you it's it's interesting to see what my quality of movement was before and what my quality of movement is now because i didn't have a dance background right i you know i wasn't thinking about tissue paper fingers and you know really opening up the hands uh and and one of my good friends and she also teaches at our studio um she she and i would really talk and so we would work together and you know i attribute not only yoga I think to understand the body awareness, but also her coaching as well to kind of understanding how to articulate through moves and really challenging me to complete a move. Um, because I know that when I start, when I train or even sometimes in competitions, you know, I'll, instead of taking, you know, the nice long path to tell a complete story, I'm like highlights. And I pull back, so I don't really complete it. <laughs> Sometimes we get cliff notes of movements from me. And so that's something right now that I'm challenging myself to, to tell a good story, a complete story, instead of just like, here's some bullets, enjoy. <laughs> I love it. it. I feel the same way. Um, just working through the movements and trying to like, think, not think about them, but not I guess rush through them is a good way to say it. Kind of enjoy yeah. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I oh my gosh, it, it's because it's um it, it, what I mean. What we do takes a lot, right? You're you have so many muscles that are firing at the at one moment, and then also, especially when you're trying to learn something, too. It um, 
sometimes you're not thinking about let me complete the movement. You're just thinking, let me do the trick so I don't die. <laughs> like I went to I went to Miami and you know how they have, you know, the poles at Muscle Beach. I, I swear the thing's like the size of like a, a lamp post, but I was gonna do a brass monkey on it. So I'm trying to do the brass monkey on this thing. And, and because like you know, I burn easily. Of course, you know, I put like, you know, sunscreen on. And so I'm trying hard, so hard not to fall and slip off his pole. And one of my friends goes, point your toes. I was like, I'm not trying to die. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm talking about it's too funny. <laughs> I can't right, imagine it on screen and someone telling me point my toes. <laughs> Right, they're like, yeah. everyone's watching you. I, yeah, I get, I get told that. I get told that, and it's one thing that I tell my students: you know, look, I, I don't want to overload you with information because I remember what it's like to be in your positions. And then when we start feeling a little bit more comfortable, at least in the technique things, then we can start addressing and polishing. I think some of the, you know, some of the lines or the toe points here and there. But let's focus on the confidence to get through something first, and then we can really smooth it out. Um, and then, you know, I'll tell them the only time that I'll ever really, you know, interrupt you with a move and say, point your toes is to me if it's a safety issue. Because there are certain tricks that having a good toe point helps you engage those muscles to not only pull you into the pole a little bit more, but then to also help the muscles um have like a nice solid grasp i love that philosophy um i agree with it and not many instructors um you find practice that sadly <laughs> do, you right? have any, <laughs> do you have any other philosophies like related to Paul? I, I do. I think a lot of them, a lot of them actually stem from doing my yoga teacher training. And I believe there were about 10 core principles in our teacher training. Um, and the number one was just respect. And, and you'll see throughout that, that conversation, it's a, it's a respect for the profession, you know, And, and honoring that, um, and also honoring limitations, you know, it's, it's and them get to where they want to be. I think you, you popped in and out of that brilliant statement. <laughs> I heard, I heard pieces of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it, oh, Chris, you're on mute. I heard about allowing them to accept um, their limitations or what, yeah. what they, um, um, et cetera. Yeah, and to listen yeah, to so your body. Absolutely, absolutely. Listening to your body under, you know, honoring your your limitations. Um, and, yeah. Yes, I love it. It's so hard to do it, especially for people new to pull. <laughs> they just want to like get there. <laughs> <laughs> and when I started, I I was actually I was I was the exact opposite. Uh, I started off, you know, going through the Diva Fit program through the levels. I did my first competition. I think when I was level five there, um, it was a PSO competition, and it was level two entertainment. Um, and then after that, I, I embraced what I kind of called like a sloth philosophy. And it was because I did not feel comfortable doing dynamic movements at that time. And I know that at the time that I was having that conversation with myself, that's what became really popular, I think, on the scene. And I was like, you know, I, I want to make sure that I really understand my body, that if I'm able to deadlift through something, you know, that's, that's totally valid. Um, and I actually avoided dynamic movements for, for a while. Yeah. 
I'm kind of in the same boat with dynamic movements in my body. How would you recommend to myself and to anyone else um, how to get over that? Because right now you're killing the dynamic movements for sure. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I just, I, it's very frustrating. Um, I feel like I'm conditioning a lot. I don't know if it's doing the right thing. I don't, like, how did you get through it? So there there are certain things for me I, I found first dynamic movements that i think worked for my body and how my body moved um like if you think about the various phoenixes that are out there i would say that that's a dynamic movement you have your true grip your cup grip your twisted grip um and then there's one that i like to do which is a it's a true grip but you press off with your forearm um, so you don't use the, the the finger of power to press down and lift. Um, and the reason why I bring all three of those up is because if you understand that my shoulder, let's say, doesn't move in a specific way, then maybe twisted grip isn't for you right now. And maybe a true grip Phoenix might be best. Um, it's interesting because your true grip Phoenix really activates your pec minor which is up here. So if you have a lot of strength, I think in the pec minor, being able to have that full motion down and strong lats, you might feel that it's more accessible to you. And it's, you know, almost the same thing with a cup grip Phoenix as well. You know, if your deltoids are really strong, you can pull yourself in and use the lats as well to help lift the body up. Um, so I think, I think sometimes at least what's helped me understand dynamic movements is kind of going back to that sloth philosophy, which is I can see the full picture of the dynamic movement, but I would, what I would like to understand is what muscles am I engaging through that movement? Um, and you'll see it a lot with some of the backflips that I've been working on recently, the way in which my hand is wrapped around the pole actually requires me to really pull down with the shoulders and engage the bicep. So when I do that, I'm able to kick forward with my feet, but I pull even harder. So now I'm using the energy from the kick and that attempted a deadlift to bring me up even higher. So if I were to, if I were to say, here's some things that I think would be helpful try to go through some of the dynamic movements and break them down piece by piece and just think about how it makes your body feel. Um, understand where your current strengths are. And, and I would say play to that. Find training partners um, and people who are willing to, to work with you, spot you, cheer you on. Um, and, and I think you'll see at least that you're just having a good time, <laughs> you know, and you will see growth. You'll see growth that, you know, it might not be that you might not hit it right off the bat, but over time, when you start seeing where you started and where you're at now, you're going to be blown away, blown away by that growth. Thank you for sharing that. Sometimes as a big burly man, I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to lift my weight and do that. <laughs> so it's definitely overwhelming for sure. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Stick to my strengths Use the power of physics, Chris. And finally, yeah, yes. yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, um, I see so many people like when they're trying to deadlift into a brass monkey. Um, they what sometimes I think what we forget is our head is very heavy, and so if you want to deadlift into a brass monkey, put your head down, and that's actually going to help lift your hips. And so you're using physics to kind of help complement your muscle engagement to get you up. Yes, I call that seesaw technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny. Oh my gosh. I also love the sloth philosophy. I feel like that's like my 24 7 always. Um, but I appreciate <laughs> the way you broke down like the dynamics because it is hard to like think about like how am I going to fl fly myself around like this but if you do break it down into like the different specifics that what you need it does make it more tangible yeah I there are there are certain things when I've been exploring dynamic movements um 
I will say I probably should not have done because if something bad happened, um, well, we might be having a different, you know, story time. But so, for example, when the pandemic happened and everything shut down, I don't know why, just in my brain, I said, oh, I can Fonji. This is fine. Um, and I tried it and it was fine. I did it. Um, don't don't do that. Like, literally, don't do what I just said that I did not. I would not say that that's, you know, something that you should do. Um, but, you know, I've. There's my dog. Um, I've done I've done some of that, too, where. I. have I've analyzed something and I've tried it enough where I'm like, okay, I've now deemed it safe for me to do. That makes sense. Yeah. And don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah. Don't try it at home. Work, try it with sorry, the, the finger snapping is for the for the dog. Uh, I think somebody knocked on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come here, come here. <laughs> like what are you trying to tell us yeah <laughs> i was clapping <laughs> oh yay yeah here she is oh <laughs> she's beautiful oh yeah, welcome to right. welcome to pull on the call hey, you gotta say hi you gotta say hi <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> oh my gosh well what did you do anything else besides teaching or do you have another another job or a hobby or uh yeah so i like painting i like making pottery uh drawing cartooning um i i just i really enjoy art it's it's so much fun and i think that's one of the things that keeps me coming back to pole is i feel like i'm able to combine um emotion artistry with movement and it it has it, it's just so much fun um I, I i truly believe that like art is therapy um and movement is medicine so having having a you know having these hobbies like you know painting and pottery it really helps me focus um and then my job outside of, you know, teaching, I work, um, I do budget finance and acquisitions work. So, uh, during the day, I'm a little bit of a numbers guy. Awesome. That, I know. I did not know that. That's, um, that's so funny. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> A different persona at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's kind of funny too because um you know when I when I entered into this field, I thought, you know, people were gonna be, you know, it's like I don't know how they're gonna react to me or are they gonna be really dry? Uh especially because I didn't start off doing numbers work. I actually started off doing events work. So you had to kind of play to communication skills and a little bit of charisma while you were doing that because, you know, there was a huge element of customer service. And when I went into that, um, you know, the numbers part, I was a little, it's like, I don't know how people are going to, you know, handle this. And it, it's actually, it's been pretty cool. People are really receptive to, uh, you know, my personality. Uh, we'd actually talk about me doing poll, you know, at work. Uh, they, they're so supportive of it. And, you know, even some of them have come to, uh, you know, competitions and yeah. So it's, it's cool to see, to see how those two have kind of come together. Um, and everybody's, you know, sometimes people, I mean, you know, throughout the work week, they'll just say, I have no idea how you do what you do i just saw what you did on instagram last night like what <laughs> and i come back and i say sometimes i'm surprised at what i do too <laughs> oh, but you're like the superstar at your job i <laughs> uh, <laughs> definitely definitely the entertainer 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> when you first started pole too, did you did you know that you wanted to be a teacher, or was that just something that like randomly happened? Um, it just kind of randomly happened. I think I think is the more that I saw how teaching yoga in yoga started to play to I think some of my understanding around pole and actually how I started kind of internally communicating about some of the movements I I felt like teaching was the next step um and it, it's it's not something that I walked in saying yeah I'm going to be a pole teacher um it, it just kind of grew from that internal communication, but then also having really amazing teachers to learn from. Um, you know, I saw how they taught, how everybody kind of worked together. Um, and I just saw that the community that we were building, you know, in the studio. And I thought, yeah, you know, I, I want to be able to kind of be that person, you know, as well and join this, you know, phenomenal team. Um, you know, of instructors that we have at Diva Fit. Hell yeah. Well, what, what is your favorite style of pole? Um, that's a, that one's interesting because I think it's, it's more kind of my mood than anything else. Uh, if we were to approach this question from PSO categories, I actually started off as an entertainment guy uh, and, you know, my first, my first routine, I sniffed my armpits on stage. I did like the Mary Catherine Gallagher superstar thing where I was like, uh, and then my next routine, I actually danced with a giant stuffed taco because I love food. And then I decided I'm going to challenge myself. So I started doing, I think a little bit more, some, you know, I started doing champ routines, but I think I did them with more of like a serious and maybe like dramatic element to it. And I went actually went back to entertainment uh, in 2022. And I did a whole Dolly Parton routine and we did nine to five. So um, a lot of it just, a lot of it really is my mood. Like if I'm, if I'm feeling super silly, you know, maybe I'll just kind of put on some fun music and I'll, you know, dance around or think about you know comedy if i'm feeling in this you know kind of like maybe it's later in the night um and i just kind of want to like chill you know i might do some low flow stuff to some lo-fi music um if i'm just kind of in this you know i feel like slowly maybe articulating through movements maybe i'll do something dramatic and then of course you know, there are just sometimes you're just like, I am really feeling myself today. And I feel very like, and we've all been there, right? We've all been like, I'm hot today. Um, and when I have those I'm hot moments, like I turn the red lights on in my condo because I have those Philips Hue like change lights. I turn that red stuff on and I put some industrial music on my heels and like, and we, I will slither on the floor. So... <laughs> I love it. So everything. Yeah, Has there ever it's been just... like a pole class that was like, Bleh, I don't like this style. None of the, you love, you love it all. I, I definitely, I definitely love it all. Um, I think it just kind of stemmed from the fact that, you know, I like exploring these different sides of myself. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, when I first started doing kind of like sexier movements and sexier routines, it was one of those, you know, sometimes you just don't necessarily feel sexy when you're doing it. And I think to kind of be in control of your body and have that, I think, communication with yourself, it's such a, I think it's just such a confidence builder. Um, and so when I first actually started doing uh, maybe like a more of a sexy style, I, <laughs> I looked so awkward. Uh but I realized that I looked awkward because that's what I was feeling. And I think that feeling was really 
translating itself into my movement. So, you know, after, after that, I just looked in my, looked in the mirror. I was like, okay, you're going to be sexy today. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be sexy. We got it. And we get down on the floor. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> Right. Sometimes it does take a lot and it is about like the confidence that you have in, in your own sexiness, whatever that may be. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I like, I'll even, you know, take it, you know, sometimes I just, I tell my students, I say, look, you're, you're sexy can be whatever you want. You think funny is sexy. That's your sexy. Like if, if being kind of, you know, slow and, you know, dramatic, if that's your, if that's your sexy, go for it. Um, so <laughs> yes have you ever done a sexy competition routine that's one of my goals uh, I really 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 want to do a sexy competition routine now I have done there's a local um queer artist uh kind of collective in the DC area it's called the nail salon and it's run by this phenomenal human being. And it, the whole mission is let's bring together queer artistry in a, in a space and we can share, you know, hand balancers, pole dancers, painters, uh, spoken word, drag queens, you name it. Um, and so when I've done that, uh, I've done typically maybe like a sexier song and it's, you know, it's been maybe more of like a sexier routine on a stage pole. Um, so it hasn't been in a competition yet, but definitely in my mind, I would love to do some good, like just a good sexy comp routine because I've been dying to just drop into a split on stage. I love that. I can't wait to see. <laughs> I, added a, <laughs> I added a drop split to entertainment and they weren't too happy about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, that you know what they they added a new heels category to the the pro show this time. So hopefully we'll <laughs> get a chance. Okay. Chris, Chris and I entered the artistic or artistic because we all got lumped together and we both had heels on and everyone else did all these beautiful expressive routines and we had well Chris's was more I guess um like uh introspective and um. I guess how would you describe it? <laughs> Mine was more like I was a siren. It was like a weird story. Um, but Chris's is beautiful. And they were misinterpreted, I think. Because <laughs> I like to make my entertainment pieces really sexy and provocative, but also tell a story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm with, I just want to compete and tell and give that awesome fucking sexy performance. Yes. I did I did a routine uh and I I put you know one of those little dance harnesses on uh and I wore I wore this black hat and that's probably the sexiest that I've done for a PSO routine uh and I licked my finger on stage but the fun part about it was <laughs> yeah. this was so in Denver I actually had a choreographed routine uh and in Denver like this was the first time performing I could see the audience so they like one one of the audience members blew a kiss at me so in the middle of the thing I just looked at her I go yeah, I blew one back and they were like ah. uh and then I could really see the judges and I just I remember just focusing on this one judge and I just looked and made eye contact and I just went ah. yeah <laughs> I mean that was in that was that that part was choreographed, but like it was just kind of the the original eye contact was here's a generic thing, but one judge just happened to look at me and I was like, good focal point, like let's go. Um, and so I feel like I feel like it looked a little bit more intense than it typically did. <laughs> I love it so much. It was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a bit awesome. Did they leave like a comment? Did they like mention it in the comment? Like, did they feel I felt like you were talking to me? <laughs> um, it's so it's so like the feedback that I got was really it was really good. Um, you know, they 
they were saying things like, you know, we weren't necessarily sure what, you know, the message was, um, or, you know, were you trying to be sexy or were you trying to be entertaining? And I was like, fair. Uh, I was like, sometimes I wonder that myself, but it goes back to sometimes entertaining is sexy. So that's a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they did, they actually, they really enjoyed it. How, you know, I was playful with the audience and, you know, even just the, the intensity of the eye contact that I made, you know, they, they were really appreciative of it. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to have to add that. I might steal that if that's okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Lick, licking a finger on stage is not proprietary. Like <laughs> go for it. <laughs> be like, like lick your finger and then be like credit to Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> oh don't just you know look the only thing that i can say is you know lick the just don't lick a pole because that's against the rules yeah have you read that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i read that and the first thing that popped into my mind was i'm kind of sad that i wasn't there when that happened because <laughs> i i would have i would have screamed which in retrospect was probably good that i wasn't there because somebody would have heard me on their video. <laughs> this would have happened. You would just heard my loud, you know. <laughs> wow, I did not know that was the rule. That's... Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Imagine being the first person and then they're like, no, no one else can do this. <laughs> yeah. Right, because I feel like everyone would do it. Like, that's probably like, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like a thing I would do but we can't do it. Um, have you done any other competitions besides PSO? Uh, so just PSO and then, you know, just local, you know, kind of like local routines. I'm trying to do more of that. Um, you know, just kind of see what's out in the DC area, see what opportunities are there. Um, it's kind of, it's interesting around here because we have a very small, very small uh, community, but now that I think there's more exposure to just poll in general. Um, so more things are coming up, you know, like I said, with the nail salon, um, it was great to do that because the person who runs it has a stage poll. Um, so they're able to, you know, bring something, set it up. And I think there's some other venues around here where, um, you know, they have access to a stage poll now as well. Awesome. I love that there's more showcases and um, things other than, than competitions and more pole dancer opportunities to to perform and show what we love. Mm -hmm. That nails yeah. a good time, right? too. I don't think we have anything like that. Right? It, it sounds it awesome. It really is. Yeah. And and the thing is, the, the person who runs it, I mean, they're they're very much true to their word, you know, just about the importance of queer spaces and queer artistry and whatnot. Um, so, you know, their, their heart is definitely in the right place. I mean, when there was, um, you know, a shooting at a queer space that took place, you know, he, he made sure that, you know, a chunk of the proceeds went to donate to help the families, um, you know, so it's stuff like that. You know, I'm, I, I enjoy going out, and performing, um, but if I'm able to find an organization that I think can take whatever proceeds I make and give them to a good cause, that's that's something that I'm very very happy very happy to do. So I like the showcase opportunities, but you know any any opportunity to help raise money for a charity, that's that's definitely where my heart is. I love that. Yeah. We have to start creating some of that up here. Yes, yeah, for sure. Right, there's so many, um, so many places that can benefit from just awareness first, and then we could express our talents and help, you know, to raise money for everyone. Right, it's not about just us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you happen to have a favorite pole trick and a pole nemesis? 
uh, Pull Nemesis, Bird of Paradise. <laughs> uh, Gennaro, uh, I realized when I read that question, <laughs> I was like, I can tell you a lot of moves that uh, are kind of a nemesis. Uh, even getting a, a, a I think, um, technically proficient spatchcock is, is kind of a nemesis uh, move for me. So, I <laughs> uh, I think yeah that's that's a it's a good. So right now my favorite and I, I don't necessarily have actual names for them, um, they're they're more or less shapes that I like to make, um, and I I can send you you know picture for reference later, um, but one of them is this kind of interesting, um, like I really like twisty shapes. So there's one move where I hold the pole with this arm and my legs actually twist out to the side and then the opposite hand comes um, out. So you you kind of look like an X and it's, it's really, it's just, I think it's just such an interesting shape. And when you get it from the right angle, um, it, it looks so nice. Uh, I've been playing with, um, there is one shape that I, pretty sure that I came up with. It's actually a yoga inspired move. I have not put it in a routine yet, um, but it's called a grasshopper. And it, um, I would say that's probably my favorite one just because it's something that I feel like I was able to create. Um, I just have not found a way to get into it, like kind of pretty. So that's why it hasn't gone in anything yet. <laughs> it will go right at the beginning of the routine. Yeah, that's how I should start the routine. All right, done. It's in there. Was like, it one no, of the pictures? No lie. <laughs> was it one of the pictures that you sent us? Because you sent us some really awesome photos. They were, and you were right. They were just, um, I would say, shapes that maybe didn't have like trick names. Yeah. Um, I can, I'll send you a picture of the grasshopper. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I've, I've posted that before, um, like a while back. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll get you that. Or, um, you know, if I don't get you a picture, maybe I'll just get you like a little clip of it on Spindle. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there's the starting <laughs> position, but I, so not to, not to make this about me, but, uh, I think, I think you just solved a question that I had for the next routine that I do, which is how am I going to incorporate this thing in? And so I, the starting position, you know, when they start routines, they're going to be like, what's your starting position? And I may be like this thing <laughs> where my hip look like it's about to fall out. <laughs> that's the starting position. <laughs> right. You want to start with having the, their jaws drop right away. Just be like, what? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. How can we? How can you go about and like officially naming it so everybody can call it the grasshopper? Is there a way for that? Um, I don't know. I, I the oh, I think typically is. when people name pole moves, I think it's usually named after the artist. And I wanted to keep it as a grasshopper because I wanted to pay tribute to the fact that it it was a shape that we do in yoga. Um, and I just felt like it would be, I don't know. I just feel like it would be kind of like a. a crappy thing for me to do to be like oh yeah i drew inspiration from this thing but i'm i'm gonna make it about me um, yes. um so i just I, I wanted to i wanted to make sure that i at least keep kept the naming convention consistent so i could pay tribute to what you know inspired that shape on the pole that's awesome i think um and i think that competition was at uspf um, if you create a new trick, um, they name it, or you can name it in that competition or something. I remember when we were looking it up, I read something like that, but that's only like the official way that you can name it. <laughs> gotcha. Well, <laughs> maybe we can start a grassroots effort. I think right? that's the, that's the terminology that people use, right? We can go back to the PD system on Instagram. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good old days. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> but I wonder what kind of research has to go through to be like, is this a trick that's already been done? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's so interesting to actually to talk about that because 
um, I, I have this conversation every couple of months, especially with um, when I meet people and we start talking about poll and they talk about, you know, is there trick names? How is this? How do you guys, you know, codify things? Do you codify things? And I think because there's just, there's so many different people out there and there's so many different ways that people are trying to bring it together. Um, I think it's kind of hard for the community to be on the same page with the shapes, not only because there's so many people that call these things, you know, different moves. We don't really have, I think, anything super structured to codify all of it. But then also we're coming up with new shapes like all the time. Um, and so it's like, how do you go about giving this an official name other than, well, it's a handspring variation or it's a this variation. Uh, you know, it's, I think it was easier you know, when I was looking at yoga poses, because in Sanskrit, things are, things are very upfront, like things like hand to big toe pose or twisted hand to big toe pose. It's, it spells everything out for us. It's like, how do you go about doing that? Like you, you can't necessarily say you, like, could you imagine trying to describe a pole trick like that? Like inside leg hang to, and it's, you know, so it, it makes sense that, you know, we say, oh, this is a, this is an inside leg hang or this is a, a an Aisha. Um, so it's, yeah, tangent, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, we tried to do a whole episode about uh, pull, pull trick names and it ended up being a bust because there's no way that you, like the origins of the names, everyone says that, you know, they're, they're different. Um, in different regions and it's all okay yeah like i think we called something a double leg kick around when i learned it and somebody said oh you mean a fan kick and i was like yeah can you show me what a fan <laughs> kick is and they showed me and i said oh yeah that's it i said i learned it as a double leg kick around but like i'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind so now whenever i teach fan kicks right um you know i'll say hey this is a double leg kick around. Also, in some places, they call it a fan kick. Um, yes. Even things like I've heard boomerang spin versus a Peter Pan spin. So I learned, I guess boomerang spin is probably the the more well-known term. I guess inside hand up and your legs kind of straddle. So when you spin around, I actually learned that is being called a Peter Pan. So sometimes even when I teach that, I say, we call this a Peter Pan in our curriculum, but I've also heard other places call it a boomerang. Um, I've heard it called boomerang. Peter Pan is cute. I've never heard that one. I've also heard <laughs> it, um, leg straddle race spin. <laughs> like literally it, everything it does. That's what um, I yeah. call it. I've never called it boomerang or what was the other one? Peter Pan. Uh, Peter, Peter Pan. Pan yeah. yeah. I, I just call it like a <laughs> straddle spin. I was like, what trick are you guys talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember all these names, but they are really informative because like some of them do kind of describe it a little bit better. Like I feel like maybe um, people who have a dance background would be like, okay, I understand a fan kick. But then when you say double leg kick around, like that is what it is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like it makes it makes sense. Like yeah, unless you wouldn't know what a fan was. Yeah, it's so. just I'm. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like okay. Um, you know, it, it's it is what it is. Like because I think for a while there we used to call it like inside leg hangs and outside leg hangs. I think at our studio, we used to call them, uh, like, dis one was called a descending angel or something. Oh, and wow. I, yeah, I, I will say just changing the name, you know, from that back to, I think, what is, you know, now everybody calls it inside outside leg hang. Um, you know, to me, it, it makes more sense. And when you're learning all of the moves, it's just an easier name to remember, you know. 
It is. That's one with many names, too. I've heard it called so many things. The inside leg hang, the inside leg hook, the Gemini mm -hmm. hang. Yeah, hook. yeah, Gemini. We used to, I think we used to call it Gemini. Yeah. Um, which, you know, as a Gemini, I was like, well, there can only be one, so we got to change the name. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> right, so I always thought I was like, there's a Gemini, and then there's Scorpio, which is the inside and outside leg hook. But then I was like, what are, are there's no Leo, there's no Capricorn. Like, what about the other zodiacs? Look, Mandy, you gotta get on it. You know, <laughs> get get those. Because I want to rock the Leo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's doing this? Let's get on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean we created a poll bible and they named all of them maybe we could do the same create our own poll bible and give all the names <laughs> yeah the, you know create a create a book the poll zodiac yeah I, I don't have a, i don't have any i don't have any copyrights on that or proprietary oh nature on that so so take it roll with it That'd be like so cute yes <laughs> I, I love that that's funny yes. yeah <laughs> um uh, well do you do you primarily teach um only in studio classes or do you also teach online so primarily uh in studio when the pandemic happened we would do online classes i would do online yoga and i also taught an online conditioning class which that was really cool because it was just strength training and then all of a sudden a f you know, maybe a month into it, uh, two months into it, I just started seeing everybody like deadlifting into all these different, uh, you know, these different tricks. And, and, and how long did that take? <laughs> um, I, I do, I think it took, I think it took maybe like a couple of months um, for them, I think I, I will say some of them had already had pole experience, but it was during the pandemic, right? And so it was supposed to be, I think it was supposed to be an hour class. And when an hour was up, I'd look at them. I was like, are you all tired? Like, do you want to go for another 30 minutes? Maybe another hour? I mean, what else are we going to do, right? Um, and so we did. Uh, and it was it was really cool because I saw... I saw so many, and this goes back to, I think, just one of the joys of being a teacher. You get to see so many little changes in your students where maybe they're doing a butterfly and you notice that that bottom hand just seems so much more confident as it pushes down and away from the pole or that one muscle group is now a little bit stronger. So they're able to think about the entire trick holistically. I love that you mentioned that because it is truly a beautiful thing. Um, a lot of people sometimes may ask, why do you pole dance? What are you doing? And we truly do help people. Like it's so inspiring just to see where people go from not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. It is, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely so beautiful to continue the practice and to even like enhance everyone's practice during COVID because that was hard to stay motivated during all of that. So just to know that your students like, like kept going and then they like all got deadlifts. <laughs> it's just so amazing and awesome. Like you're such a good teacher. Yeah, they, Thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, they, I, they're just, I call them, um, sometimes I tell them, I'm like, y'all are little badasses. Uh, like the other day, uh, <laughs> We were, so we had like every session it's, it's eight weeks. And so eight week eight, it's, um, it's like a review and, you know, I'll just be like, we're beast or, you know, they'll do things. And I'm just like, y'all are little badasses. And, you know, even we do like a conditioning week and just seeing them, um, you know, I'll ask them, I'll be like, is this like, are we feeling it? Is it too easy? You know? And they'll look at me and they're like, we're not going to answer this. 
<laughs> because they they know what's coming next that if it becomes a little too easy then i'm like okay we can just push you outside the comfort zone just a little bit more um but it's uh yeah oh my gosh it's just i i feel like i could talk about my students all day uh I feel like a lot of that just a lot of the conversations that we've been having about tricks just goes back to them. Um, they're just a, I think they're just such a pleasure to be around and they're such an energy. And I think as much as, you know, I think like when we talk about like the student teacher relationship, you know, it's, I, I look at it as like a, like a two way street. I think the students help me as much as I think I help them. Um, I think, you know, where I might help them break down a trick. I always ask for their feedback because they might help me break it down better. Uh, as much as I cheer them on, you know, to, to keep going, sometimes them meeting you at the end of class and just showing that gratitude, um, you know, really makes it. So it's a, it's a really good, it's just a really good experience. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I hope your students will be watching and listening to hear this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to listen. They're going to be like, so does that mean we don't have to do week six anymore? And like, absolutely not. <laughs> but just remember the nice things. Remember the nice things I said about you all during this podcast yes. when you're like cussing me out internally. <laughs> I guess. But I, so you have an eight week session for your for your classes and everyone renews after the eight weeks is that how yeah. it goes and yeah, then so week we do six eight is weeks. conditioning <laughs> yeah so it's the way that i broke it down is um there are eight week sessions and for the first few level first few levels um i accelerate it so i teach them instead of one spin a class i teach them two spins a class and then we do 15 minutes of conditioning at the end of class followed by a cool down so from day one like they're they're getting it um, and then week six is when I do a full on hour and 15 minutes of just straight up conditioning drills. And that's usually followed by, uh, that's after sexy week, which is week five. And then we do, uh, uh like a combo week, week seven, and then I do a review week, which is week eight. So we go through every single move in that level. We talk about the technique, answer any questions, and then keeping that same approach, that same methodology. As we get through more and more of the levels, you start seeing them do all of the spins. And it's like, it's just, it flows. And sometimes I'll ask them, you know, Hey, does this feel better when we, then, you know, the first time we tried it, um, now that you've done this a little bit more, like, let's sit down as a class and let's talk about it. Because I think as a teacher, sometimes we teach from the perception or, or we teach from a space of our body. And I don't know what it's like to be in their bodies. Uh, I have a different structure, um, my background could be different. So I, I really like that kind of taking that element in, you know, the like week eight and just kind of ask people what cues have you maybe heard in the past that helps or what are things that you're now feeling that would help. Um, and so it, it creates, I think, like a really good collaborative space. And also, I mean, it's kind of cool because like, if you think about, you know, the proportions of somebody's chest, for me, I can reach around or sorry, reach across and it's fine. But if somebody has, let's just say maybe like a larger chest, reaching across might not work for them. So, you know, one of the cues that I got from somebody said, what works for me is going out under and across, you know? And so I think it's, it's it's pretty cool to kind of see that take place as well. Yes, and then that just builds, you know, more ways for you to make full more accessible for everyone. I love that. Yeah, and then how how long do people um, for each level do they do you have like a set like everyone goes through each session this many times, or is everyone on their own journey? Um, everyone's on their own journey. If 
if you don't think that you're ready to go to level two, you don't have to go to level two. Um, so, you know, we do level one through six. Um, what I do is I actually let them repeat level six twice because I think since we do that little graduation, uh, you know, at the end, I want to make sure that, you know, because for many of them, this could be their first time performing. Um, and I know that's a, it's a scary experience, especially if you don't have that background. I mean, I remember the first time I performed, I was so nervous. Um, and it was my first experience doing pole with adrenaline. I almost flew off the stage. No lie. Like I did a flying body and I mean, I put some gas in it and I was like, whoa. Um, so, you know, I, I remember what that feels like. Right. Uh, and even some of the, even some of the inner dialogue that it's like, you know, I, I, I want to look good for my friends and my, you know, my family, you know, people that are coming to see me. So I like to try to take that level six and at least give them the opportunity to do it twice. So we have a full 16 weeks now to work on a group routine, their personal routines. And I think it gives them a little bit more room to breathe. Do you have any uh, drop-in classes or is it all theory? So we do have drop-in classes. Like, I mean, you could drop into level one, two, three, four, and, you know, so on. Would not recommend dropping into level six just because, you know, at least for me, it's more choreographed based and how we're kind of working on this graduation. Uh, if you wanted to drop into a spin pole class, we offer beginner spin. Um, we offer spin pole. We offer pole master dance. Um, and so like our pole master classes, they're broken down into a few different, um, you know, kind of uh, categories. We have like pole master dance, pole master fundamentals, which is that's typically geared towards learning things like butterfly and, you know, working on the skills for like a caterpillar climb. And then you have pole master tricks. And, you know, that's where you start working on, I think, more advanced kind of tricks so maybe you know you're trying to work on your handspring or um you know maybe we start kind of combining you know tricks so you can understand you know combos or passes um but we also offer for like drop-in classes um deep flexibility classes that you can take there are also um like a like a low flow class that we offer so if you ever, you know, if you ever find yourself in the DC area, you know, the schedule for Diva Fit, you know, it's up. Um, we definitely offer drop-ins and, you know, if it's not clear on the main page, you know, just reach out to me. I think that's cool that you offer this series um, and drop-ins for the same class because then you could have um, students that commit to the series and they're always there or you can have students that are just able to come every so often and I, that's something I didn't even think about <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> yeah we're, we're trying to you know pull our students to see what they like and there's a lot who do like the series and then there's some who prefer the drop-in we we just kind of stick to the drop-in but having that option might be a good idea <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely different, um, I think, models to approach it, right? You know, one of the benefits of having probably just saying, hey, here's one, two, and three, students can then choose when they want to go to the next. Um, you know, I think for us, I think the way the curriculum is, you know, is broken down, it's, I think it's pretty granular. So it's kind of... I think offering you that space to build on the strength and the body awareness and then keep, you know, keep making things just a little harder. Like we don't typically start even working on inversions until level three. So, you know, we spend levels one and two, we do a lot of spins. And then what I like to do is I like to actually condition them to invert. Um, so part of my conditioning drills it's solo work on the pole, but then also partner drills, which is is really fun uh, to do. Like I help them, you know, with pull-ups, they'll break into groups, we'll work on pull-ups and pull holds. And, you know, we'll kind of talk about, you know, where they're feeling it in the arms, talk about, you know, the engagement of the core. And then, you know, even the same thing for inverts where they'll grab onto the pole 
and they don't go all the way upside down, but their partner helps spot them a little bit and kind of helps lift the legs up just enough so they can really focus on that engagement as they're, you know, using their hip flexors and the quads to keep the legs engaged, to slowly come up and then keep that pubic bone tilted to kind of increase the compression to then slowly bring the legs down. So my, my approach on that is, you know, I like to try to teach people actually how to deadlift before they do a trick, because I think even if you're going to use momentum to get into it, if you understand the muscular structure and the muscle engagement that's required, I think you're more aware and you know where things need to be engaged. And I think it's, I have no scientific background or no scientific, you know, information on this, but I think it does help prevent injuries. I agree with that statement. I can't deadlift it a lot, but especially with the inverts and the shoulder mounts and mm -hmm. hands, if you can, definitely deadlift. A lot of people. <laughs> I, I love the dogs. <laughs> Dog <Yeah>. break. <laughs> My dogs are crying out the door now. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you have um, any advice for beginner pole dancers? Um, I think a lot of it, if I had to give advice to beginner pole dancers, um, you know, aside from, I think, some of the, the core principles that I think we talked about, you know, from like a teacher's perspective, like honoring your body, I would say show yourself a lot of grace as you're moving through this. Um, especially if you don't have a movement background pole, I think is, it's very interesting because as you are working on strength and movement and, you know, maybe and empowering yourself, I mean, a lot of people come to pole for a lot of different reasons. I think as you're doing this, there's a certain level of vulnerability that is required of it. And, you know, if you think about it, think about how much clothing you wore when you started pole versus perhaps how much clothing you wear now. Um, I mean, you know, I'm in, I'm in Speedos all the time now, but, you know, maybe when I first started being on stage without a shirt on was terrifying to me. Um, and there really is this, I think, internal dialogue. And, you know, whether people want to admit it or not, that comes up throughout the practice and you know my best advice would be show yourself grace it takes time and every day establishes a new baseline for you so where you're at today will not be where you're at tomorrow um you'll some weeks you know you're just gonna unlock so many different things and then other times it's gonna take months to, to figure something out, that's okay. Um, just continue to show yourself grace. And if there's a lot of negative self-talk, I think it's really important to just kind of identify really what is the root cause of that. And I think sometimes there's, it's what I call an inner critic. And people, I think, use that inner critic as a way to try to protect themselves from failure. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's such good advice and, you know, lots of things to think about when you're a beginner polar. <laughs> when we advance, I feel like we sometimes That's enter true. that um, imposter syndrome and our inner critic for sure. Yeah. Thank you yeah. Um, for everyone. Right. I think it is hard too for beginners to understand that every single day when you come into the studio is like, a brand new body <laughs> starting over yeah. like how am i feeling today like i can't expect to get the same tricks that i got yesterday and even absolutely or sometimes this will work if it's a slippery day yeah and i mean even when you become you know even when you start becoming more advanced um 
sometimes we forget it's like oh i used to be able to do this trick and it's like well if you haven't done it in a while you know yeah. it's okay you know sometimes you just have to kind of to relearn it right i know i sometimes get overwhelmed because i'm like oh now i can't do this trick again and i have to retrain this trick and like like do i really have to practice every single trick every single day <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's honestly there's some tricks you know i i'm just like eh, you know what maybe it's just not for me and maybe i won't practice it um yeah. and then there's other tricks you know i i call my greatest hits uh <laughs> but it's it's kind of cute because um my cousin and our friend um the three of us train together every tuesday and so sometimes we have little like little themes, uh, you know, where we'll work on a combo and we'll take it to, let's just say Aisha. And so sometimes we'll just be like everything to Aisha <laughs> um, <laughs> or, you know, everything. Like we tried this one move, it's called like a Wenson split. And we were like everything to a Wenson. So <laughs> that's cool. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like all of mine would end in a Jade though. Every single oh time. yeah <laughs> oh i love a good jade yes <laughs> the jade for me is one of those moves i have to re-practice every time i uh -huh. try <laughs> so i i think i have their i think they're hypo extended knees so my legs naturally kind of make this like wave so if you watch a lot of my videos there are times where I'm trying to really fully extend my legs, but the dip of my knee and how it looks with my calf muscle, it looks like I have like, a, I guess like a micro bend. And it's <laughs> like, when I try to do a Jade, it's like, um, it's like a wave. <laughs> the Jade wave. <laughs> the Jade wave. Yeah. One in like one of my students one time she goes I I don't really have a jade it's it's more of like a pizza slice I said girl I love pizza <laughs> I said and that's a good jade <laughs> there's a pizza jade there's a jade wave yeah. yes yeah <laughs> I love it so much I'm such a fan of jade I'll take jade in any form. <laughs> <laughs> Well, where do, where do you see yourself in the future? Do you have any fun full plans for the future that you want to share, or just going um, along with the flow? I don't. I don't really. I don't really know. I always think about where I'm just going to see myself as like five years as a mover, um, and I think that kind of guides like where I want to be. You know, five years as a mover, and I think that kind of guides, you know, what I plan on working on and doing next. Um, you know, I do think probably in the future, um, you know, I'll probably stop competing, uh, you know, and, you know, if I, it doesn't mean I'm going to stop performing, but, you know, at some point, you know, I think I'd like to say I had a really good, you know, I had a really good time and I had like a really good run. Um, you know, maybe I can spend more time now trying to help other people who are trying to get in that position. I love that. Right when you're when you went through all the things, it's time to lift everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope um in the future maybe online conditioning classes. I would love to take part of that. If I can go to Virginia, that would be even better for sure. <laughs> I would I actually thought recently about trying to do an online conditioning class again because it really I I miss it. Um, I, would I miss it. just being able to say, here's the, ah, yeah. <laughs> right, because in a because... few months, we'll all get our deadlift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's proven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you try to talk and your dog's like, love me. She's, oh, so this is, as soon as she got more comfortable, um, this is what it's like at work. If, uh, if we're on like a, uh, you know, a team's call, it usually starts off. You just see this nose and then it just goes and she starts licking me. 
That's so cute. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I wish I could have mine in, but three of them gets overwhelming. <laughs> so her, she's got a really good friend. It's my boyfriend's dog. <laughs> um, and I was watching both of them and it was so funny because they like they get wild together like they run all over my condo oh my god and, and i turn they said oh turn your video on and as soon as i did they were behind me and they were like slapping each other in the face and you just see these like ah like kind of things happening i said those are my dogs <laughs> <laughs> Like, thanks a lot, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think, Chris, I think that was all of the questions that I had to ask Brandon. We asked about muggle job. Oh, do you have a specific hand or body grip you use? I'm curious this because of all the dynamic that you do. <laughs> oh, monkey grip. Yeah. Monkey grip for sure. I mean, that that was a that's how I got my starfish, honestly. Um, and it's it's not because it's like it sticks, like um, it's not like glue, but what I what I really like about it is it dries your skin out just enough. Um, and then it actually provides a little bit of grip. Like I've used dry hands before and I I like it, it helps. But my hands, true to the name, they like they feel dry. They feel chalky. Uh, monkey grip does not feel like that to me. I just feel like my hands, they're a little bit dry, you know, like normal. Nothing is sweaty. Um, and they're just a little, a little sticky. So I found that that actually helps me out. Monkey grip, is that the same as the monkey hands? Um, I don't know if it's called... I don't know. I also I can send like you a three, picture of it. Because okay, I start okay, yeah. Hands and it has changed the game. But if there's a monkey grip too, I'll try it. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you a link because I buy it off Pole Junkie, and it. I mean, it really. My cousin was like, "Hey, you know, do you want to try this?" And I tried it, um, and I was I was like, "Oh," because before that, I never used grip. Um, I, what? yeah, I never used grip, um, before that. And then when I started using it, um, tricks like my flyby, they just, they felt so much more secure. And it was actually really important for me to start using a grip aid because I noticed like, my, I think my body chemistry has changed recently and I was having a much harder time sticking to the pole. And I think because of that, I wasn't able to utilize proper engagement and I would feel it. And so I was like, we're going to nip that in the bud and we're going to start trying grip aids out uh, because I would like to keep doing what I'm doing for a while. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you brought that up for using grip for safety reasons, for body awareness and not for like struggling and using wrong muscles um, when you're slipping down the oh, hole. Yeah. Cause yeah. sometimes Pullers don't use the grip because they're like, no, yeah. but like it is a helpful yeah. tool for safety. <laughs> and sometimes, I mean, sometimes I hear pullers say, oh, well, I'm cheating if I use grip. And I say, no, man, you know, like I'll tell them sometimes I've, I've legitimately said, you know, boo boo, you're not cheating. Um, Like if, if you have a tool to help you, and it helps you build the proper engagement and build the muscles and keep you safe, then use that tool. Like that's, that's not cheating. That's, that's playing the game given, you know, like it, I totally just froze right there. It's like, it's, you're playing the game the way it's supposed to be played, you know, like if you have, if you have cards, and you find a card that's going to help you, you know, win it, why would you not play it? Uh, right. Like the first time I tried, um, we got a silicone pole down here and I was like, whatever silicone pole, but now I love it. Cause now <laughs> I, like, 
I can, I trust my grip so much more and I feel how strong, much more strong I am in different ways just because I, you know, I can grip the pole and not like sliding around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's use I still these experience tools that with my hairy legs. Oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I gave up trimming my legs and whatnot a while ago. Uh, I was like, uh, just too much work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it so is so I'll much put, work. It is. When I started pole, um, I, I just, I, I, I was blown away with just you know, like trimming the legs, and now wearing heels. And I would tell some of my friends, I'd be like, "You better appreciate the shit that your girlfriend does." To you know, to look pretty for you because shaving your legs takes a lot of work and wearing heels is not easy. So if you have a problem, we can discuss because part, like part of the discussion will be, how about you try to shave your legs, walk in high heels at the same time, like appreciate anyway, and rant. (laughs) And Aisha. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and Aisha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, do Sorry. you have anything else you want to add to um to tell the pole world or anything? Um, any other tidbits or fun facts? No, I mean, like I'm I'm just happy. Um, I'm just happy to be where I'm at as a teacher and I'm happy to be where I'm at as a, you know, as a performer. Um, it's definitely not something that I thought would be with in the realm of possibilities for me. Um, so, you know, it's just, it just all goes back to some of those core principles. It's like, you know, take it one day at a time, honor yourself, you know, show show your self-respect show your body respect um you know show each other respect you know and honor that you know just the way that we talk to people you know the way that we talk to ourselves and you know just just remember you you have to take the first step you know in order to get anywhere and there are going to be times where you're exhausted, you're tired, that self-talk happens, just, you know, just don't give up and just show yourself that grace that, you know, I think we've now brought up maybe three times, um, you know, so if there's just anything that you get, I think from, from my experience, and I think from this episode, it's just, it's really just show yourself grace. I love and appreciate that so much because it's so true and so hard to do. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon, for sharing all of your tidbits of knowledge, your wonderful strength training uh, information, and the information about your studio. This has and been so much fun. <laughs> I mean, the first time we heard about you was, I think, Baby Stun Muffin, Justin. Yeah. You were like, what are his inspirations? And that's when we started following <laughs> Yes, and now we got to interview. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I adore him. Um, I I love seeing him succeed. Uh, and we like to say, you know, sometimes like, oh yeah, you know, like the House of Muffin. Uh, he's just, <laughs> yes. he's just such a nice person. I mean, they're like, I I would love to just have like a thirty minute you know episode with you guys at some point where I'm just able to tell you here are all the nice people that I've met in the poll community, and let's just you know let's like let's let's what's the word glow them up i don't know um yes. i'm not cool so <laughs> we will glow them up yes well yeah we'll glow them up <laughs> it's a thing now yeah oh, yeah right. like hype them hype them up i don't know yes. i feel like you guys understand uh what i mean because i do that at competition yes. sometimes like during warm-up when people get nervous like i look at them sometimes and you know i've i've been known to pull out a book one of my friends wrote a book it's called does this divorce make me look fat and it's talking about you know her whole journey uh there's a plug nikki nikki frias uh she's the author look her up on amazon uh (laughs) uh, but she had this she had this chapter and it was called 
uh, you're a do something bitch. And I, I just started, I just started reading quotes from that chapter to people in competition and hyping them up before they got on stage. Um, you know, it, it was, it was just really, it was really fun. So yeah, we should have a 30 minute episode where we just get to talk about all the, you know, all the great people, you know, that we've met and just, you know, kind of how, you know, maybe they've impacted our experience and our journey. Cause Jessica, Jessica, John, who you guys had on here, uh, she was teaching at Diva Fit for a while. She was doing, um, silks and oh, Jessica, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jessica is one of those, you know, she's also one of those people that, you know, I think impacted me in a, in a really positive way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> right it would not be a 30 minute interview uh episode that episode would be like a whole day <laughs> oh that you know what that's fine we can do it after the atlantic pole championships i'll be tired i want you know i want to take i want to take a break uh you know so we can just we can just sit down you know have like our our hype time tea time and you know call it a day <laughs> i would love that yes new segment <laughs> <laughs> And uh, when is the Atlanta competition so we can plan this? <laughs> yes. Uh, so APC is going to be, I believe it's April 23rd. It's that weekend. Okay. Um, I'll be doing artistic level five for that. So that'll be, that'll be the, the nighttime show. And then after that, oh, I'm going to want to just take like a nice, uh, like a nice break. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited about this one because it's going to showcase um, some of the stuff that I've been working on and some of the things that I would like to start putting into a future, you know, future routines. Nice. Oh, That's awesome. Oh, when it, when it comes out, um, I'll definitely, I'll definitely share it, uh, you yes. know, with you guys. <laughs> she agrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cute. All right, Brandon. Well, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with us today. No problem. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really appreciate, you know, just the the space uh, you know, that you guys provide and just, you know, the discussions about you know, everything poll. Um, you know, I've listened to a few of the episodes and it's just, you know, it's just, it's great to learn about, um, you know, everybody else in the community. And I feel like you guys are really bringing people together. Yeah. Uh, so, thank you so much for saying that. I truly appreciate it. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Like, I think it is really important because I know for myself, I've learned so much just from talking with everyone. And I think it's important to build bridges between, you know, studios and dancers and teachers so we can all share and learn from each other. Yeah. <laughs> and when you start having online conditioning exercises, please post them. <laughs> yes! Yeah, I will. I will. It'll be it'll be an Eastern standard. Uh, yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Deadlifts for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess on that note, we should do our sign out. Yes. <laughs> this was well, so thank much you. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to or watching this episode of Pull on the Call podcast with the amazing Brandon. <laughs> My name is Mandy Matt. <laughs> and I am Chris Rivers. I'm going to fuck off this chair. <laughs> They're signing out. Oh, you should clack them. Clack them. <laughs> I love it. <laughs>